Trying to make good TV here. Yep. These are nice seats. Can I sit here during the show? You know, that's why I got here early. The five questions. If I make long answers, I can be here all night, right? I'm Goat with M Productions. We're here at the End Men Party 2023, and you've waited for it. Now you got it. It doesn't get any more OG than the OG of all OGs, End Men. Number one, number two, he's number three. Who knows, but he's an OG as OG gets. Gary Cross is here. We're going to hear a little bit about the real story. We're going to talk to one of the most accomplished skateboarders the End Men has ever produced. We're also going to talk to a guy who has proved that you can get up off the couch anytime and take anybody down right here at Gary Cross. Gary, we go back all the way to the beginning. Uh, full disclosure, we've known each other since we were very, very young, and we've done a lot together over the years, and we're, we're really happy to have him here tonight. Gary, tell, let's start off really simple. Let's go pre all of this stuff. Uh, tell, us about, tell us about the first time you became aware of what a skateboard is. Uh, five years old, Hobie board, Chicago truck, Chicago wheels is my brother's board. And we used that for years. And then over o Occidental, Paul Clark lived there. We used to race around when I was 11 on it behind his fourplex mm -hmm. and set up uh, beer cans or I uh, should be soda cans at the time mm -hmm. and race around and skid around until the Grentex came out. So. Okay. That was kind of the modern era. We were more mostly on our knees and not doing a lot of stand-up stuff until I was about 11 years old. Mm -hmm. Gary, Gary mentions uh, Paul Clark in a, in a neighborhood, uh, Occidental Street in, in Sacramento, California. Uh, it's an area that, that, that all of us in Sacramento knew as an area where, where a gang called the Jetsons hung out. Are, are, you, are you intimating that you might have been slightly associated with the Jetsons at any point? Uh, I'm not going to deny or acknowledge that. Okay, there, there, you heard it. You heard it right here. Gary's a fucking Jetson. All right, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, back, back to the story. So this is very early on in, in, in all of our skateboarding careers. How old are you at this point with with the, with the plastic skateboards? Uh, Eleven to twelve when the Grintex, the Grintex and the Banana Surfer came out. And what year do you think this is? What year? I don't know what year it was. So I would have been on probably uh, seventy three. Okay, that's early. That's early. Uh, I, I was on clay wheels in Santa Cruz at the time. Right. So, so right about this time. So you're you're young now. So now you what? You just kind of skate around for another year or two. When do you, when do you make the breakthrough? Uh, might be a bonsai with power paw wheels, Excalibur trucks. Okay. And the first like skate. I think I got it probably at Skateboard City or somewhere. I hooked it up, and that was where I really kind of you know got really into it. Okay. Doing you know, could do maneuvers and, and this stuff. is a year or two later. How old are you now? I think. I'm gonna say 14. Okay. Now, and you're 14. When when do you when do you meet other people and start like skating with people? The, the first time we used to take the bus to what to Old Sack, and it'd be three or four of us, and you had to take two buses to get there, and then take a bus. And if you saw someone on a skateboard on the sidewalk, you were like, oh, skateboard, because there was only a dozen people that I knew at all that ever even knew what a skateboard was. And then we end up meeting up with Boston down there and everybody else that was, you know, that's, okay. that's where, the, I mean, really, it came, I mean, that was like, that was the conjunction, like, oh, what, where else is going on that's not this? And are, you're, you're talking- Stoker Hill. You're talking about the famous Stoker, Stoker Hill, Hill referred yes. to in the End Men movie, the spot in, in Sacramento downtown under the freeway where everybody learned how to skateboard. At the same time, now I haven't met Gary at this point either. I'm living, I grew up in Santa Cruz, and right about this time, 14, 15 years old, is when I come to Sacramento for the first time. And that first, very first trip, I meet everybody by that point, because all these guys in Sacramento already knew each other already, and they're already skating together. So right about that time we meet, there's there's the skateboard shops, Skateboard Central, Skateboard Etc., Bostics, uh, the, the Cal Pros going by that point. Okay, now we're all, I mean, what are we all? We're all like 16, we're in about 16 16, 16, yes. Okay, and so then, so you've got that skateboard. When when does it get more organized? Um, probably meeting up with Bostic and riding for skateboard, et cetera, and going to contests. I mean, I was going to contest on my own before, but then you get a sponsorship, and then all of a sudden you're on a team. Mm -hmm. Because everything was team-based back mm -hmm. then, mm -hmm. right? Your little league and all the, you mentally, you know what I mean? You're like, you know, and then you got a jersey, and you're like, whoa. 
I'm part of something. Yeah. But for Don, for sure, and then he used to haul us all over California, Santa Cruz, and as as he La would, Costa, yeah, yeah, exactly. been all over the place. Yeah. And now he now by this time now Gary, Gary is known as one of the best all around skateboarders that we've ever seen, but but he's got a couple of specialties. Uh, one of them is slalom racing. Uh, were, were, you, were, you, were you racing by this point or kind of just general skating? We all had to do all the, all the, when you go to a contest, you do high jump, you would do freestyle, you do slalom racing and barrel jumping, anything else they had, everybody did everything. And all the events. And, and so, yeah, and I, I don't think I was really good at slalom racing at that point and couldn't have the right equipment and wasn't put, didn't put my mind to it. Mm -hmm. I was more of a freestyle guy yeah. and then until I started pool skating and then moved forward on that and then somehow became okay. better. That's good. Gary, moved, he moved on to pools because I, I had the freestyle thing covered. Yeah, he's, I didn't. I, I could only do three and a half, three sixties. And it was like, you can't be yeah, anybody yeah. with that. Yeah. But so, so, now, so now it's organized. Now they're skating, there's contests by this point. Uh, by this point, the, you know, the whole gang, the Santa Cruz connection has met the Sacramento connection and team Santa Cruz slash N men have now kind of started to become all one, and we're all kind of skating together and really starting, and that, per chance, is about 1975, the beginning of n -Man, and then 76, really the first real glory year when everybody really got together. So by this point, what, did, have the parks opened in Sacramento by this point? Right, Sierra Wave was definitely, you know, the big, the big thing that happened. And I was good in the ditches there, not as good in the pools, but I loved the, I just loved the ditches, so that's what I skated that weren't the pools and the half pipe, you know, was efficient, but not, you know, one of the guys in, that was known for going big in those things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I don't know, maybe it was my power flex wheels or something that really didn't want to go up the hills on those things. Yeah. But they, they did a board slide like the best in the ditches. Well, like we said, so there's there's multiple disciplines and Gary's specialty uh, in later in the later years here has been slalom racing. And uh, in case anybody hadn't been paying attention, uh, tell it, Gary Gary won this race back in 2001, we understand. Had something to do with some kind of, some, what was it? The race in Morro Bay was the first world championship in the modern area of slalom racing in Morro Bay down Main Street, and Jack Smith put it on. Okay. Right. And All there right. 97 racers there, and a dual slalom, and it was a big deal. It was a big deal. It seemed like it was kind of a, kind of a a big challenge because I'd been down there and raced against some of the other Central Coast guys, Paul Dunn, who was the fastest guy, and he beat you know he had beat me the, the couple of years before down there, and I was a little bitter on that, and uh, it was good to come back and then face him in the finals. Okay, so what uh, what age were you at that point? Uh, Forty years old. Okay, so that's a world championship then. Uh, something occurred recently. Now we're many years later. Something just recently occurred again. Tell us about that. Uh, the World Championships in Salem, Olympic qualifier, had to take a, a qualify to have a drug test taken. And all the thing we all uh, they had to jump through people from 11 countries there, and uh, the Grand Masters had a chance to race there and uh, did went really well on Friday and Saturday. There you go. How well did you do? Uh, in the Super G, I got uh, first place, and it was a single lane. Uh, uh, best time of two on that, and I got first place. And then the second day was a dual slalom, and it got, got down to the last eight people. And then you raced head on head with those guys, and I took first, beat Ty Hunt for first place. There you go. And for everybody out there, just to remind everybody exactly, sorry, if, if you'd care to reveal, how old are you this year? I'm going to be 63 in a month. Be 63. He's got me beat out. I'll be 62 next month. But that's how that works. Once again, you know, we, we go back to the beginning here. We just wanted, we're just trying to get the word out here. Let everybody tell their story. Kind of show how we all ended up here. One big giant gang of friends. We're all here 45 years later at Inman Party 2023 interviews. I'd like to thank Gary Cross, the OG of all the OGs, for being here. All right? And Sean. We'll see you next time. I'm going out.